Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Steve. I'm Lindsay. Today we're going to be reacting to something quite exciting, something that I never even thought of, and that is, can someone actually drive across the UK faster than the sun? Now, when I first saw this title, I was thinking, okay, they're talking about driving from basically, you know, one coast to the other, but that's not actually what he's doing here. Is it possible on the longest day of the year to drive from John Oates Groats to Land's End in a single day? That would blow my mind. The thumbnail grabbed my attention because it said 838 miles. What? It's only 838 miles? Yes. We just drove like 700 or so miles to see my family. Mm -hmm. Can a person actually drive across or the length of Great Britain faster than the sun? Let's see. All right, let's find out. Oh, wow. What, what are those islands in the background? John O'Groats Ferry. Land's End, 874 miles. New York, 3,230 miles. Wow. Wait, 3,230 miles? You realize that is just a little longer than the entire length of mm, the U.S.? I was just thinking about That's how long it is across the ocean? Wow. What I'm about to attempt in today's video is partly influenced by Top Gear and a challenge that they did in 2011. February to be specific, on the shortest day of the year, Jeremy Clarkson drove from the westernlymost point of the UK, which is Land's End, to Nest hmm. Point over in the Far East on the shortest night of the year. Oh, wow. Wow. So that's only eight hours. Wow. So you really could do some really cool road tripping around uh, the UK in a relatively short period of time. Yeah, seems very accessible. And the idea was to arrive at Nest Point before the sun rose. Race against God. Now, today, as I'm standing here, is June the 20th. In just a few hours, midnight will mm. pass, and it will be June 21st, which is the summer solstice and the longest day of the year. This presents a fairly rare opportunity where theoretically, and the hope is, I'll be able to sit here in a few hours at 4.02 in the morning to be precise, I'm dreading that, and enjoy the sunrise somewhere over there as it comes up over here at John O'Groats, but then immediately drive Orkney. to the north end in time to enjoy the sunset. The total daylight time between John O'Groats and Land's End tomorrow is about 17 hours and 30 minutes, and I've got 838 miles to travel to get between the two points. Wow, so 15 hours wow. basically. So I wonder if anybody's ever tried to drive from here, take a ferry across, drive all the way down and hit Land's End. I would like to do this, but not do it in one day. I'd like to do this because I think it's probably going to be beautiful. I was going to say, I bet it's a gorgeous drive. Yeah, I'd like to do this over the course of say, I don't know, like three, four days. So you could really enjoy yeah. the stop where you want to. Drive, drive a yeah. couple hundred miles and stop along the way each day. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Let us know in the comments, guys, if any of you have done something similar to this before. If you've taken this drive, obviously probably not in a single day. Will I be able to make it to Land's End in time? And that's why behind me is this L405 autobiography because ultimately this challenge is actually a test of endurance and there's probably no better car to do it in. And that's exactly what I want to prove in this video. Watch the sunrise and then Land's End. <laughs> That would be so fun. Yeah, it would be That would be a blast. By the way, it was only eight miles from Orkney. I saw that. Morning. It sure seems light really early there. Did you that see that? That is crazy, yeah. Was it like three something? Well, I'm sure by now it's like four, but. Wow. Hey guys, before we get going, let us know what time does it generally get light there? Because I mean, here at least this time of year, which same time of year is this video? Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, it's like I want to say like seven in the morning. Seven to eight yeah. in the summer, the peak of summer. It doesn't get dark until about ten. Mm -hmm. Fifteen 
16 hours to drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's 4.02. I'm just switching all the cameras on. But, okay, I think we're all good. That's it. Let's go. I guess it hasn't hit me what we're about to do. This will be. This will be the longest drive I've ever done in, in sort of one sitting. I want to say I've actually done longer drives. I've done over a 24 hour drive before. In one sitting. Well, I mean, obviously you got to get out and get well, gas. Well, I mean but, like one stretch yes, without sleeping. Not sleeping. Yeah, yeah just, str I, <laughs> I drove from, um, from North Carolina, my hometown to almost the Canadian border in one oh. sit. During the winter, mind you. Can you imagine wearing long sleeves this time of year here? No, <laughs> that's, that's that true. Be, it would be boiling. I bet it's so. But it feels so, so much better. There. Someone in the comments the other day was talking about they were in Scotland. I can't remember where or if they had mentioned where they were in Scotland, but they were talking about how we had mentioned it was so hot here mm -hmm. and they were 60 some degrees. That sounds amazing. Yes, we're jealous. <laughs> we're so jealous right now. Right, so it's 4.03 now. 4.02 was the official time that the sun rose at John O'Groves, which is where we just were. Wow, that's early. And that is the sort of time that the, the first slither of the sun pops up above the horizon, which obviously we couldn't see because there was clouds on the horizon, but we're going off that time. So we're now on the way. We've got 839 miles to travel. Waze is estimating 13 hours and 35 minutes currently without stops. Although That's not bad, honestly. If I was to plug that into Google Maps, it's more like 14 and a half. Feet. By the way, guys, I love the look of this road. With, with perfect conditions and, and no, look at that view. Perfect conditions and, and no traffic, about two hours of leeway. And I, I don't think I'm going to have to obviously stop for comfort break because I just think I cannot stay away look at all the sheep <laughs> that's different so our route today then uh, obviously we're at John O'Groves the top sort of north easterly point of the mainland of the UK and we're going straight down it's a Monday and people are going back to work and unfortunately I don't know actually but I think we're probably gonna hit Glasgow, Edinburgh area around 8, 8.30. The eight. Rough hour? Yeah. Oh, I love Dude. that. Dude. Perfect conditions. That's Maybe. beautiful. And uh, the roads are a dead quiet. Looks so peaceful. Do you see this? What? Like, I've outside of like what looked like a little village sign or something like that just a second ago, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any speed limit signs or any like. I haven't either. I was just wondering. How fast he was going. What what are the speed limits like on a road like this, guys? Oh my gosh. Miles we've Look how narrow that is. Since I picked this car up and funny enough, wow. miles to carry uh, to cover right now. But is that, is that a one lane road? So, so this is the most comfortable car I've ever driven. Um, Dude. This this looks like a like a real back road. Yeah. This doesn't look like a main road. Of course, I know that the population in that area is probably quite right. low. Um, <laughs> let us know in the comments how many people live in the area he's in. I think he said he's been driving for twenty six minutes or twenty six miles from um, John O'Groats. Uh, but this looks like a serious back road here. It doesn't look yeah. like a main highway or something. So, but it looks beautiful. This looks like a very relaxing drive. Oh my gosh, makes me like motion sick. <laughs> I love how few people you meet, like how yes. sparsely populated it seems. I wish you could be here. I wish I could be there. To quantify in words, how beautiful. Wow. Sunrise behind me, just the color of everything in front is stunning. Off my right, we've got some serious mountains, just the clouds nestling over the top of them. And I'm sitting here in supreme comfort. How lucky am I? The roads can- Oh my goodness! Look at the lake over there. Oh, 
Oh. Wow. Well, my feelings of euphoria quite quickly turned into feelings of concern. I've had a restricted performance error come up on the car with a red triangle, and we are basically in limp mode now. Oh. So now nothing happens. It will go up to 45 miles an hour under its own steam, but that's it. At the moment, we've got a lot of downhill, so we're managing to keep the speed limit, which is 60. Speed limit 60 on that road? See, right now, I've got my foot down. Oh, no. See the red triangle. Oh, wow. And um, we're going uphill at the moment. And I'm not sure. Hopefully, it makes it. Oh, no. I guess this is good. It's happened here where the speed limit's 60 because we're managing to maintain almost that. Because on the motorway, that's where I'm going to lose time if this doesn't get sorted. And I don't know if it's something I should continue to drive the car on. Right, I thought if I'm going to pull in, I might as well pull in somewhere pretty. <laughs> no, I didn't realise we are going to... I'm going down to see Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Bloody hell. <laughs> Diagnostics complete. Engine. Oh, here we go. Manifold, absolute pressure. That is crazy he can do it through his phone. Yeah, that's wild. Come on. Issues are being cleared. Yes. What? What? <laughs> How does that work? Clip and act. Okay. Wow. Amazing. To celebrate, I'm going to have myself some grapes. <laughs> this car also has a fridge like my 7 series. What? The fridge in this one is in the front, so it's actually somewhere that's useful for me. Wow. Look at that. Okay, guys. I've said this on other videos, but it's just <laughs> always mind-blowing to me to see these landscapes that don't have trees. They're very green and lush with like low-lying plants and grass mm -hmm. and, you know, bushes and whatnot, but like... But other areas had a lot of trees. Others had, just... but, but like... We don't really see the mountains around here without trees. That's just that's just such a unique landscape to me. Oh my gosh, he had a hoodie and a fleece sweatshirt on. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Oh my gosh, I love it. So we have averaged around 60 miles an hour so far, which is obviously very, very good, especially given that we had that little... Look at the mountains, man. I'm starting to feel really, really tired. Um, just, yeah. Struggling to keep my sort of eyes open. It looks like you couldn't ask for a better day, though. Mm -mm. Absolutely beautiful. We're in average speed check zones, which, although I absolutely despise, well, this isn't a bad place to be stuck in one. I've got the car on. You know what those are, don't you? No. Basically, without going too into too much detail, I looked into this a while back and I was shot by it. There are roads in the UK. Uh, I don't know how often you see them. Uh, I think they're a l on the motorways a lot, which we would call an interstate. Mm -hmm. Calculates like how long it took you to travel yes. through. Yes. And so at average like speed, points, was right? your average speed over what the speed limit is? Could you get to po from point A to point B faster than what you should have? And then you would get a ticket oh my gosh. automatically. That would annoy me so much. <laughs> that, that, that is something I'd never even thought of before uh. seeing that. So, wow. in terms of going forward then, we are currently in between Inverness and Edinburgh. The estimated time of arrival... Wow. Yeah, exactly. Look at that lake. It's gorgeous. Since I left John O'Groats, that's gone down about an hour. So in three hours... That's what you call stunning, hour, right? It's very good. But essentially all this is doing... That's is, beautiful. It's banking time because I will need to stop. I can smell something funny. Big, big cloud, or sort of a constant puff of whitish grey smoke came out the back. So much so that the people behind me had to move out. <laughs> Serious? Oh my gosh. So, that was about two minutes ago. I'm pulling in to some services here. Oh no. Something's not happy. Are we out of cooling? Uh, I don't know. Okay, bad news. Something is leaking uh. under the car. 
and I don't think it's air conditioning. Let's put it that way. <gasps> oh, guys. Oh, no. I can't tell what that is. It's cold. I'm wondering if it's diesel that's leaking, in which case Ooh. I cannot drive if it is. Oh, no. So I'm going to just have a little lie down now. Yeah, God, what an up and down this the journey has been already, and we're not, you know, not even halfway. Or it might turn out we are actually at the finish point now. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Hello. Um, it is half ten. I can't remember what time it was that I pulled over, but I've been woken up by people who. I'm in this huge car park, they could have stopped absolutely anywhere and they stopped right next to me. Still not sure about the car. Um, I'm gonna watch the, I suspected it might be fuel that's leaking. So I'm gonna watch that range and that fuel tank and see if it's going down abnormally fast. Okay, I'm putting it again because there is something pouring out the back of this car. Oh my God. Man. <laughs> Oh man. Ah. Okay. Something is not right with the car. I just had a look underneath and there's sort of it's pouring smoke out it smells really rich uh, and it's leaking various places so it's not good the problem is i'm really i'm not in a good spot here at all i'm not safe in the slightest there is a welcome break six minutes away three miles uh, i think i'm going to try and limp it over there because it's not particularly safe to sit here welcome break is that what they call rest stops Oh, I bet it is. About five minutes ago, it was on half a tank. Oh, oh, that's not good. Our no problem. Um, no. Yeah, that's bad, isn't it? That's really bad. Okay, so I've spoken to Paul from Richmond Land Rover Specialist, and he uh, has been very helpful. Just said, take it to a garage. So I found a guy five minutes away who I've just spoken to. That's good. He says he can have a quick look. So hopefully at the very least we can find out what's going on and we'll know then if this is something that is fixable or not. Mechanic here is very kind, he just had a quick look. He reckons it is a fuel leak. I think I knew deep down it was because the smell is so obvious. I just wasn't, you know, I've never had that before. So they've been in there about 10 minutes or so. It's one of those things where it's either a, a good thing that they're taking a long time because it means they found what the problem is and it's fixable or it's a bad thing because they can't find the issue this inherently means it's something a lot more complicated oh no oh no well that's not a good sign that's not a good sign at all This is Look at it just pouring out. To go. But you know, <laughs> what can you do? Uh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh, this is different, isn't it? Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, a hotel in New Lanark is where we are, uh, still in Scotland. Looks like a nice hotel. between mm. Glasgow and Carlisle. Um, yeah, it all went wrong, didn't it? It all went wrong. So basically, what's happened with the Range Rover is it's got a bad leaking fuel injector, which was causing the fuel to leak, as we know, and also now a pretty horrific coolant leak as well. So needless to say, the John O'Groats Land's End Challenge is a write-off. Aww. It's beautiful. Man, for being in the middle of nowhere, yeah, it's a really nice hotel. Wow. 
Uh, shoot, I'll just stay there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. Wow. That is beautiful. What a beautiful town. He got it back? Only one day. I mean, about 24 hours after. It That's a miracle. I am so relieved that the car is fixed. And uh, I'm really relieved for um, the guys at Richmond Land Rover as well, whose car it is, that it was something fairly uh, minor. It turned out it wasn't a fuel injector. It was the diesel pipe, coolant hose, and a connection to the coolant that had gone. Um, so actually... It was £100 of labour, but the parts were less than 200 quid. So, genuinely not an awful thing. It was like a 300 quid or so fix. M&S on the gas station. Wow. You don't see that here, obviously. Wait, you guys have M&S at gas stations? It's going to be a pretty expensive filler uh, because the fuel here is £1.50. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but in England, they hike the prices up massively at these sort of motorway service stations. It might be about 120 pounds, I think it is. Top tip, by the way, and it's especially useful wow. to have cars like this with massive fuel tanks. Um, it works on most things. Stick the petrol fuel cap in between the handle on the fuel nozzle, and it will just do without you doing anything. Wait. Ours have like a lock thing you yeah. can just and it'll go on its own. Yeah, ours are just automatic. I thought that was the way it was everywhere, but in the US, you have this little latch thing that yeah, like latches another. on and then it basically pumps until it's full. When it's full, it just kicks automatically off. stops, kicks off. I wonder how much time is spent on what you would call a motorway, an interstate, as we would right, call it. Right, versus like the back road, mm -hmm. highway type. Yeah. Look at that, man. I love the yellow flowers. I decided against going all the way to Land's End because I felt like ultimately what I'd set out to prove and to achieve on this video failed because the car broke down and obviously I was unable to complete the challenge of driving from John O'Groats to Land's End on the same day, which is a real, real shame, but it hasn't really taken anything away from the trip for me. I've had the most wonderful past week in Scotland. I've been pinching myself every single step of the way. All right, guys, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I was really hoping to see if he could make it all the way, but obviously things happen. Things happen. So if you have done it or know anyone who's done it, point us in that direction. Uh, one thing I think would be a blast is to drive the outer edge of Great Britain all the way around. As mm -hmm. close as you could get. The perimeter. Like the, like the closest roads to the coast all the way yeah. around. You know. Yeah, that'd be cool. I like don't a know. A giant ring. Consider it was 838 miles across from, you know, north to south. I mean, I'm guessing that's out of 2,000 miles around or something trip, like that. Yeah. It would be something like that. Uh, I, let us know in the comments. Has anybody done that? That would be an interesting drive. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow us on our journey to discover anything and everything from the UK and Ireland. Until next time, guys. Peace. Bye.